Amen. Can we just give the Lord praise one more time? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Emmanuel, thank you, brother. Achi, thank you so much. We're so thankful for your life. Um, listen, today I'm going to punt, okay? Um, Augustine was like, oh, we ran a little long. And I'm like, you know what? We did exactly what God wanted to do today. We did exactly what the Lord wanted to do. So here's the cool thing that you may not know. So the portion this week, via Kel, is actually a lot of times lumped together with Pico Day, which is next week. And that's the portion that um, our bat mitzvah is going to share with us, Genesis. So I'm going to hold off on this this week since it's normally lumped together with next week. And I just think that's a God plan. And I'm going to jump right into my message today, if that's all right with you. And so we're going to go in and talk about Mark. This is where we've been. This is what we've been talking about. This is the second uh, message on the book of Mark here. And I just want to kind of mention real quick, just a review of where we were last week or last time we talked about Mark. We started in Mark chapter 1, verse 1 through 11, and we talked about an introduction to the Son of God. And so we are introduced to the Son of God here uh, in these first 11 verses. And so we, we are shown here that there is a testimony from Mark, the prophets, from Yochanan Hamadbil, John the Immerser as well as the testimony of God himself. And so the last two verses that we read from that portion last time was, were these verses. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens ripping open and the ruach as a dove coming down upon him. And there came a voice from the heavens, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And so we see this amazing moment. We see this amazing picture here. The heavens ripped open. You know, yesterday, the heavens were torn open for just a moment when John Warner went back to be with Yeshua, and he went in his presence yesterday. What an amazing time. Today, what we saw in this room, my wife just kept crying, like, I don't know what's, what's going on today. I think we got a glimpse today of what worship will be like in heaven. I think we got a glimpse today of what John is experiencing right now where he is. I'm telling you. That makes me excited. It makes me want to leave this planet. And, you know, Paul talks about to live as Messiah, but to die is gain. And so, let me, the heavens got a great one. And we're going to miss him here. We're going to grieve, but we're also going to rejoice. Our joy is diminished today, but we're going to rejoice that he is written in the Lamb's book of life. And you too can, can be as well. And the reason why you can is because of this message today of what Yeshua did for you. In Mark chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, there is a battle for your souls. There's a battle for your souls. So we're only going over two verses today. And I'm going to try to do my best to keep this message to 10 minutes. We'll see where we go. That instant, the rock drives him into the wilderness. Drives him into the wilderness. Interesting word choice there. He was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan, Hasatan, the adversary. And he was with the wild beast and the angels were taking care of him. So right after the immersion, we see him heading into the wilderness. And we think about wilderness, we're not talking about, you know, going outside of Houston here. We're not talking about some, we're talking about desert. We're talking about east of the Jordan River. We're talking about the area uh, where, where modern day Jordan and Syria are today, that that east of Jordan River, that desert, Bamid Bar in the wilderness is what we're talking about here. And I just want to go back real quickly to verse, uh, actually before I even show you that, talk about the fact that it says the Ruach drove him into the wilderness. That is the same word in Greek used when Yeshua would drive out demons. Can you imagine that? What we're saying here is that the, the Ruach HaKodesh is literally expelling Yeshua into the wilderness. Why? So he could fulfill all the law and the prophets, and we'll explain that. But this is one of the verse examples where we see that same word. He healed many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons. Ekbalo is the word in, in, in Greek. It's kind of fun just to say that word, ekbalo. It's just you can be real you know, popular with your friends when you use words like that. Um, so the Ruach cast him out. Folks, let me tell you something. There is a war in the wilderness for the souls of men. Don't miss this. Remember, Yeshua is identifying with the people of Israel in immersion. He's identifying with them. 
And so he is also identifying with Israel when he's going out in the wilderness. How many years was B'nai Israel in the wilderness? Forty. How many days was Yeshua in the wilderness? Forty. Do you see the parallel here? Do you see what's happening here? And so we're going to look at three echoes in Mark chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Ever been around an echo before? You know, you've kind of been in a, in, in a valley or a canyon, and you're like, hello, 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 hello. I would go, now batting for the Astros, Astros, Astros. That's what I would do. I would do something like that. But I, I love echoes. I remember I sang at my high school graduation in a stadium. I was in, I think they call it now, we're all my Elsick people. They over here somewhere. So I was in Crump Stadium, whatever they call that thing now. It was just Elsick Stadium or field back then. And I'm literally singing, and I, we're practicing, and there's nobody in the stands. And I'm trying to sing this song with the person I'm doing this duet with for graduation. There's going to be thousands of people there, and there's this echo bouncing off of the stands. And I'm like, I cannot, this is, this is weird. So you know that there's something from the past that's coming back to hit you. And so what we see in these two verses here is something from the past that Mark wants us to see will hit us. And the first one is this, the echo of Israel's wanderings in the wilderness. Yeshua is in the wilderness because he is new Israel. And let me explain that because I don't want anybody to be mad. I'm not saying that Yeshua is replacing Israel. No way. But he is fulfilling what Israel could not do. He is fulfilling all the law and the prophets. They told them to follow the Torah. Guess who followed the Torah perfectly? Yeshua did. And so he's going in the wilderness. Guess who was tempted also at the beginning in the garden? Adam. And so Yeshua, our second Adam, is going into Israel to represent Israel. And so we see he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Hasatan. And so once again, this picture of the wilderness before us, you know, you can you imagine what it's like? He's going out there. He's, there's, it's dry. There's no place to really uh, get relief from the heat. Um, you know, where's the food? He's fasting. It's a difficult time. Charlie Daniels wrote a song when I was a teenager. The devil went down to Georgia. In this case, the devil went down to Jordan. He was looking for a show to steal. He was in a bind because Yeshua came to find the people willing to make it real. And he came upon the Son of Man. He saw it and he had no food. He was praying to God. Then the je- devil jumped upon the chance to tempt. And he said, boy, let me tell you, it's hot. I guess you didn't know it, but I'm a vittle craver too. And kid, I'm scared this desert air might get the best of you. Now, you ain't been eating your vittles, boy. But kid, your dinner is due. So if you're really God's son, then turn these stones to bread and I'll butter it for you. <laughs> Yeshua said, I am hungry, but that would be a sin. Because it ain't my bread, man's going to be fed, but by the word God's given him. Amen. Amen. That's actually a real song by a group called Apologetics. They take songs that are secular songs and they rewrite them to, uh, to biblical words. My son could probably quote every single word from that song. So I won't do the rest of it for the sake of time. But that's the idea that here he is in this cosmic showdown with Hasatan in this moment in the wilderness Would you look at this verse for me in Exodus 4.22? Look at this. You are to say to Pharaoh, this is what Adonai says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. And so what did God the Father just say about Yeshua? Here is my son. So you see the parallel. This is why I said he's like the new Israel. He is his firstborn going into the wilderness. Number two, the echo of the Garden of Eden. The echo of the Garden of Eden takes us back to this time of the first Adam. The first Adam who, by the way, in the garden had it a lot easier, right? When you're in the garden, you've got everything you need. You've got everything provided for you. You've got food. You've got shelter. You've got a cool, cool place to be. But this second Adam has to go out in the wilderness. No food. Nothing provided for him. The heat of the day. The the animals at night. All this. I think it was a little bit more difficult for Yeshua in his temptation than it was for Adam. But Yeshua, he didn't even blink. Adam's failure got humanity cast out of paradise. Yeshua left his heavenly paradise to seek us in the wilderness in order that he could bring us back to paradise. 
You see what God's doing there. Yeshua's temptation is greater than anything that was faced by Adam and Eve. And, and we see the parallels here, but echo number three. Let's get to that one. The combination of wild animals and angels mentioned here. This is very interesting. As we said before, Mark is writing to probably a Gentile audience, but the, but the Jewish folks who read it would not be lost on the fact that he's probably alluding to something here. In verse 13, he was in the wilderness 40 days. He was tempted by Hasatan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels were taking care of him. Much like what we see in 1 Kings with Elijah. And he's had this great thing happen, the prophets of Baal, and all of a sudden Jezebel comes along, tells him basically he's going to die. I'm going to move ahead a little bit here. Frightened, he got up and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom bush. He prayed that he might die. It's too much. He said, now Adonai, take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. Then he lay down and slept under the broom bush, bush and, he behold, and behold, an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. So he looked, and to his surprise, there by his head was a cake baked on a hot stone, on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. My wife loves this passage because she thinks that anytime you're stressed, you're to take a nap and then you're to eat carbs. So that's exactly what Elijah did here, and he did it twice. But also, there's an echo that we see here from Psalm 91. In fact, if you go back and look at this, this portion in Mark, and then compare it to Matthew and Luke, you will see that Matthew and Luke actually quote, because the devil, diabolos, that's what's used there, that's where we get the word diabolical from, he is actually quoting from this passage. Oh, but he leaves one verse out. You see, Yeshua is in the shelter of the Father, and that's the picture we see here, and that's why Psalm 91 is a key. Here are the verses that the devil quotes back to Yeshua that we find from Psalm 91. For he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways upon your hands. They will lift you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. And then he stops there. Oh, but no. Let's read the next verse in context, shall we? You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, trample the young lion and the serpent who's trying to mess with me right now. There is a cosmic showdown here because this is how that whole passage starts. He who dwells in the shelter of Elyon will abide in the shadow of El Shaddai. I will say to Adonai, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Yeshua had victory over the devil and the wild animals here because Yeshua is the Genesis 3.15 Savior who trampled the tempter and the serpent underfoot. That's the first glimpse we get in the Tanakh, in the Torah even, of what the gospel is going to be. And it says here, I will put animosity between you and the woman, and he's talking to the serpent here, your seed and her seed, he will crush your head. Who will crush your head? The Mashiach will crush your head. And you will crush his heel. Because he, as we read from Hebrews, for we do not have a Kohen Gadol who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all the same ways, yet without sin. You know those old carnival strong men that would show up and you'd see them, they would bend that steel rod and you'd think, that's amazing. You know, if I take a steel rod, it's not going anywhere. Maybe my son Jonathan could bend it, but I can't. But maybe it's a, 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 fl a flimsy little piece of metal I can do it, like a, a coat hanger, I can handle that one. <laughs> I can break that, right? But it's broken, and that's how we are, right? The devil comes, and we're like that coat hanger, it just breaks. But Yeshua, not so with him. He is a strong steel rod. And so when you see Yeshua, he is bent here, but he does not break. Because later, after this temptation, we see uh, we realize that he can overcome these things by love in this wilderness because he has another temptation he's going to have to face. And it's going to be in the place known as Gat Shemanim. We know it as Gethsemane. But Gat Shemanim means oppressing for oils. And in this place, in Gat Shemanim, Yeshua is pressed. This is not the last time Yeshua would face the devil in the wilderness. It would be here again. But once again, as he always says, it is written, this is the amazing thing. Every time we sin, we are saying, not your will, 
but my will be done. But Yeshua flipped the script, didn't he? And he said, not my will, but your will be done. Obedience should be the glory of humanity. And that's what Yeshua did for us in this place in the wilderness. Is there was a cosmic showdown for our souls. Now for the first time we see what we're supposed to be like as we see Yeshua and we see how he handled this. We see, what we, we see how we're supposed to act. Yeshua can fully sympathize with us because he understands temptation. He understands it. But he can also fully save because he overcame temptation. God's will is not always physically safe, people. It's not, but it is always spiritually best. Let's pray. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King, we thank you, Lord, for what you did. Lord, starting out in that wilderness, knowing you were tempted by one who was not your equal in any form or fashion, but it was done to fulfill our righteousness. For you, the second Adam, for you, the firstborn of Israel, Lord, we thank you for what you did in that wilderness, in that cosmic duel, that battle for our souls. Lord, we know it's not the devil who takes our soul anyway. It's the fact that we reject you, God. We reject your promises, your word, your covenant, everything that you give us in your love. So, Lord, today I pray for those who have not yet received your love, your covenant, your forgiveness by your brich hadashah, your new covenant. Lord, I pray for their lives today. I pray that they would realize that there was one who went to the cross in this cosmic showdown and made a public spectacle of Hasatan and all of his fallen angels. And Lord, we thank you that he today is sitting at your right hand, interceding even for you in this room right now, all of you. So Father, I thank you for each and every person within the sound of my voice, watching online or in this room. Father, I pray that you would reveal to them the truth. As Emmanuel sang earlier about the truth of what was revealed to his family, that Yeshua is Mashiach. And he is the redeemer of Israel. In Yeshua's name, amen.